Teenage New Zealand swimming star Erica Fairweather has been wowing crowds with her record-breaking performances for a few years now, but by far the biggest call-up has been the Tokyo Olympics, where she posted the fourth fastest time in the 400 metre freestyle prelims to make it into the Olympic final at 17 years of age, besides swimming legend Katie Ledecky also smashing the New Zealand record held by Lauren Boyle. The Dunedin head girl at Kavanagh College also won a gold medal at the World Juniors in 2019 and represented Aotearoa at the Summer Youth Olympics and Junior Pan Packs in 2018. This is clearly just the start of an incredible journey for Erica and she joins me now for a chat. Welcome Erica. Hi, thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. So first of all, congratulations on an incredible Olympic effort. Is it sinking in what you achieved? Oh, it's crazy. I think it'll always be that little bit of surrealness around it, but it's definitely becoming a little bit more real now that, you know, we're home and we're back into normal life. Yeah, absolutely. And I know your mum was cooking a roast chicken for you on the first night out of quarantine. How good was that? And, and to be home? Oh, it was so nice to be home, to be back in my bed after those two weeks in MIQ. It was just so nice seeing everyone again. Yeah, absolutely. Was it tough? Was quarantine hard? You're a 17-year-old girl. Yeah, it definitely wasn't the easiest thing. I mean, it, it, you had to do it. Like, it was, there was no way around it. Um, so we got it done, but it definitely wasn't easy. I mean, you just wanted to go home and see everyone again. And yeah, being in that hotel room definitely wasn't fun. And how, how did you get through it? How did you pass the time? There was lots of FaceTime calls um, and Netflix watching. And it's bad. Uh, you weren't playing PlayStation with Lewis? No, I wasn't. But I was getting all the video updates of it. I'll bet. Uh, so let's go back uh, to the Olympics. I mean, it's, it must have been such an incredible experience. What, what do you think was the big standout for you when you were there? Oh, I, I think it just has to be swimming in an Olympic final. I mean... Uh, going into that, I didn't expect to make the final. I mean, it was going to be a massive push, but, you know, when it happened, it was just, oh, getting that experience was awesome. And, I mean, you did you see Katie Ledecky and superstars like that? What, how, how did that feel to be in the same final? Yeah, I know. It was crazy. It's like you kind of always look up to them when you're younger, but now you're there, you're racing them, and you're just like, wow, like, I'm actually good enough to be here. And how did you get your head around that? Because, I mean, how are your nerves going into that final? Uh, I, I don't think I ever did get my head around it. Um, my final definitely wasn't the performance I wanted to put down. Um, and I think the nerves got the better of me on that day. But, again, it's just a massive learning experience. And what about the heat then? Because that obviously went really well, as well as the prelims. So, so did you just feel in the zone? Or how did, you, how did you calm your nerves for that? Yeah, the heat was really interesting like swim for me because I I'm usually quite a nervous person before I race but before that heat I was so excited like I was so excited and I just wanted to get into the race which was kind of odd and then during the race I wasn't really thinking as such I kind of felt like I was on autopilot mode and I just kind of already knew exactly what I needed to do to go fast. Oh, that's fantastic and it's great I suppose to have your coach there as well and then you ended the, the New Zealand team really get behind you as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we might have had a small team, but you could definitely hear them from the stands. That's so cool. And talk me through the Olympic Village. It sounds like everyone had a great experience while they were there, despite COVID. Yeah, I mean, it was um, very well kept through, you know, COVID regulations and that kind of thing. But the whole enormity of the facilities was just crazy. Like the food halls, the, um, the buildings where we were staying, the accommodation, it was just so good. Oh, so that's well so done. good. Well, how are the beds? I heard they were cardboard. Were they, were they comfortable? Um, they were all right. I, by the end of it, I was starting to get a little bit of a sore back from sleeping on such hard beds. Um, but they did the job. They got us through. And so what about your routine? Talk me through your day. Did you have particular food that you loved at the food hall? Oh, I had to be hands down the dumplings there. I think they were included in most of my meals each day. It was terrible, but so, so good. Because how do you cope with that? Because you're going to a different country, you have different beds, you're eating different food, you're probably a little bit sleep deprived. Let's face it, those finals must have been really tough, having to sleep the night and then wake up for the final. How do you, how do you cope with those sort of, uh, those sort of challenges? 
Um, I think you just have to be really adaptable and flexible about it. I guess everyone's in the same boat. Um, you know, it was heats at night, finals in the mornings, which definitely was different from anything I've ever done before. Um, but, you know, just knowing that, yeah, everyone else is doing the same thing and you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah, that's a good feeling. It's good to know everyone's in the same boat. In a way, um, I mean, COVID was obviously so difficult for many people, but it was good for you in that it brought you another year of training. So you're 17 rather than 16. And you, did you feel like you had more time to prepare? I think it definitely did me the world of wonders having it going back a year because, I mean, looking back at my maybe 16-year-old self, I probably wasn't as confident in my swimming abilities as I was going into this Olympics. So it definitely gave me more time to, you know, build up strength, build up pace and just, yeah, be in a better spot overall. Did you, and how did you go about that? Did you, you and your coach set goals of your weight? Did you put them on your wall? How do you, how do you, how do you meet those sort of challenges of knowing that you're going to the Olympics? Yeah, I definitely, you know, I had my goals. I'm not a big goal setter though. Like I have them personally, but I'm not really one to share them with people or that kind of thing. Um, but I think that's um, a good thing with Lars and I, we kind of get that and it makes sense. Um, but definitely just, you know, moving things on, keeping things going was definitely a big focus point for us. And so then looking back at the uh, Tokyo Olympics, what would you do? Is there anything you do differently next time that you think, oh, I definitely learned about a little bit more about myself and this is how I'll do the next Olympics? Yeah, I definitely think um, coming out of the games, I have kind of realized that I actually am fast enough to be there. I think there was always that little bit of self-doubt going in. I mean, as anyone would, but it's definitely kind of proven a point for me that I am up there in the world rankings and I can do, you know, make finals, that kind of thing. That's so good to know that, to have that self-confidence. And I guess that's the thing about what you're learning. You're learning along the way and you're still learning, even though you, you are still young. Looking back, you said at your 16 year old self, what about looking back a little bit further when you were younger? Uh, would you have changed anything? Would you say, oh, I wish I just had more self-confidence when I was even younger? Or how, what do you think looking back now at your swimming career? I guess looking back, I think there was just stages of growth and I don't know if I'd necessarily change them because they've gotten me to where I am now. Um, I think all those, I guess, low moments, um, you know, were stepping stones to where I am now. So that kind of was a big thing for me. So when you say low moments, because that's so, because our young swimmers, they look at you and they must just think, Erica Fairweather, you are amazing. You seem to be smashing world records and you know, New Zealand records anyway and making Olympic finals. I mean, there are low moments though, aren't there? You know, you haven't just always been incredible. Tell us about that. No, well, I mean, swimming is such a hard sport already. I mean, nobody likes getting up at 4.30 in the morning, rolling out of bed and then getting into a cold pool. I <laughs> couldn't think of anything worse than that. Um, but, you know, you're not always going to love doing it. But I'm the kind of person who loves competing and loves racing. And, you know, all that training and all those hard yards that you put in, um, they're shown in your racing. And that's what I really enjoy about the sport. And that's kind of what, you know, keeps me going through the days. Yeah, because it's painful too, isn't it? You must be thinking, I don't want to do this. My, my body's already aching from yesterday's training. How do you get up at 4.30 every morning to get back in the pool and do the same thing? Um. To be honest, I just think our squad, we kind of hold each other quite accountable for it. So it's like me and especially Caitlin Deans, um, we're very like, if you show up, I have to show up. And if I show up, you have to show up. So it's kind of like that back and forth kind of thing. That's like, if some person's there not morning, we will call them and be like, get your butt to the pool right now kind of thing. So oh, that's cool. it's definitely... Yeah, but it's it sounds working. like you've got a good team spirit, which because you think of swimming as such a solo sport, but actually when you are part of a team, it makes it so much more fun. Yeah, it definitely makes training easier. And I mean, you know, having those sparks of competitiveness and racing um, each other in training is, is so beneficial. Oh, that's cool. And, you know, obviously you were in Tokyo, you didn't have your family there, but you had your big brother there, Zach Reed, another swimmer. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, it was so good. I've known Zach since I kind of broke onto the international scene when we went to Youth Olympics together. And he's kind of always been with me in my different stages of swimming. And, you know, we talk basically on a daily basis and it's just, yeah, it wouldn't have been the same without him. How important is it, do you think, to have someone like that, a mentor or someone that you can just ring up and say, I'm having a bad day or a good day? Is that something that, you know, you'd advise other younger swimmers to do? 
Yeah, I definitely think if you, you know, you have the right person, it can be beneficial. I think I've always been quite looked after in the swimming community because I've I've been so young and going away. So, you know, Zach, Lou, um, Dan Hunter, Matt Stanley, um, the girls, Karina Doyle, Ali Gallia, they've always, um, always looked after me when I'm away. Um, so they've kind of just, you know, shown me how to, I don't know, compete internationally, show me the ropes kind of thing. Oh, that's really cool to hear that you've got that incredible support. That's awesome. What about, let's look back at your early swimming life. When did you start swimming? When did you realize, well, I can actually swim really fast. Yeah, so I wasn't always um, a competitive swimmer. I didn't start that till I was 10. Um, I basically did learn to swim programs um, all through my childhood, though, because that was like the one skill that you sh everyone should know in New Zealand, considering you drive any which direction and you're basically at a body of water. Um, but I played all these different types of sports kind of things. So uh, it wasn't till I was like, 14 and I actually made the international team that I was like right that's this is time that I'm just gonna focus on swimming I'm just gonna move everything slightly sideways and just yeah really go for it. Wow and was there a particular time where you just swam something and we realized that you were actually really fast or did it just did it was it sort of an accumulative thing where you kind of got faster and faster and faster over the year? Um, I think it was kind of that always like I kind of got faster and faster and faster over the year, but um, definitely when I went to my first Open Nationals and, you know, I medaled for the first time, I think I got a silver in the 400 freestyle and I was like, oh, like, this is pretty cool. Like, I can do well on nationally and within all the age groups. So it was really a big turning point, I guess. And was it always freestyle? Or was it always the freestyle was your best stroke or were you good at other strokes as well, which you are, I know. Yeah, I guess freestyle's always been my main focus, but I did swim like the 400 IM and 200 fly until I was like 13, which I don't know. There's some <laughs> interesting choices of races. I don't particularly like them now, but um, I definitely like to swim all the strokes. It keeps things interesting. Great. And then, okay, so Paris uh, 2024, you'll be 20. Uh, you're now, is that you now your big goal? Is that your next big goal? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've had the taste of the Tokyo Olympics and I, I just want more. Like the whole experience is so great and I just, yeah, can't get enough. And so what will you be working on for the next three years? What's your focus? Um, I think in particular the 400 freestyle and just, you know, the front end speed, um, trying to get out faster, improving my skills and that kind of thing. Um, I've always been not the best at turns and starts and that kind of thing and you know those small gains that you could make there even if it's just 0.2 it could be I don't know almost two seconds over a 400 meter race so it really does add up and it's so worth working on little things like that. Yeah the little things add up to the big things don't they especially in swimming where you know you're talking about you know your dive being a 0.2 of a second faster and that actually makes a huge difference which seems so strange doesn't it? Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, you know, I've missed times by 0.1 before and you're just like, oh, if I my fingernails are a little bit longer or something <laughs> like that. Exactly. And so what next? Because you're year 13, obviously you're about to sit in CEA, you're the head girl. How on earth do you manage it all? How do you juggle it all? Um, I have a lot of help from other people. I think um, sometimes people think that you have to do everything on yourself, but I'm really a person that relies on other people. So, you know, delegation, um, planning, those type of things, um, you know, making sure you're taking care of yourself um, before, you know, you go and do these other extra things. That's really important to me. Oh, that's great. I like that idea of delegation. That's an excellent idea. Delegate, make other people do a few, a few jobs so that you're not doing absolutely everything. And do you have trouble keeping up with your studies or not too bad? Um, I, I thought I would, but my teachers have been so great about, you know, making sure that we're going to achieve my academic goals, um, but making sure that it doesn't hinder my swimming and stuff like that. Just taking it little bit by little bit and yeah getting it that's done. really cool and what so next year what what are your plans for next year you, I mean you could probably go to Harvard or Stanford if you wanted to but are you going to stay in Dunedin yeah I'm definitely looking at staying in Dunedin next year um I'm either looking at studying online through Massey um or study, studying at Otago obviously so it's a bit up in the air at the moment but I'll make a decision sooner or later. Yeah, and I guess that's the thing. You you know, why would you change something when it's going so well? Obviously, you get on really well with your coach and things are going really well. I suppose it would be not a good idea to mix it up at this point. 
Yeah, I mean, everything, like you said, is going so well. I have a great family environment here at home. It just, yeah, it makes all the difference again. Oh, that's great. So let's talk about um, highs and lows of swimming. How do, you know, you've had a few disappointments along the way, although I can't see very many because you've done such incredible times. But if you do have those disappointments, how do you come back from that? What, how do you change that mindset? Um, in terms of like a, a bad race or something like that, I try to give myself a 20 minute window to, you know, be a little bit upset, be a little bit unhappy or angry or whatever emotions I might feel at that time. Um, but then I try to move on from it. Um, you know, I'll have a debrief with my coach and that kind of thing. Um, but moving on from it pretty fast in swimming is really important, especially when you have races, you know, coming up that you need to focus on. I mean, you can't dwell on one bad race because it's not going to define your whole meet. That's so wise, exactly. So give yourself 20 minutes and then just put it away, put it in a rubbish bin and move on. I love it. What about um, pre-race nerves? What's your what's your re regime like? Do you have this routine that you have to stick to? You've got your earphones on, listening to music, or what is your strategy? Yeah, I don't really have a routine as such. Um, I'm quite like a shaky person. So I'll like stand behind the blocks, like shaking my hands, like they've got water on them. And it's kind of cause I kind of get sore fingers when I'm nervous. And I know that sounds so strange and it is so strange, but you know, I kind of feel like it's shaking all the nerves out, you know, getting loose, getting ready to race kind of thing. Oh, that's so cool. Well, I, that just sounds incredible. You've had such an amazing swimming career up till now. And we will follow the next three years and can't wait to see you in Paris in 2024. Thanks so much for joining us today, Erica Fairweather. No worries, thank you so much.